Hi, I'm Larry Colasa, founding and president of the National Spasmodic Dysphonia Association. I learned of uh, a uh, support group in our area, I think it was 19, late 1986, maybe early 1987. Um, and it was very difficult for me to attend the support group meetings because I was functioning not always well, but you know, I had uh, conducting my business and uh, doing the best that I could. And uh, there were some people in the support group that were way worse off than I was. And, and it was quite a shock to see how these people struggled. And there were two ladies in the support group who went to New York for this new Botox therapy. And they were almost illegible, or uh, you couldn't understand them before they went. They came back and both could speak. Not perfectly, but they could be understood. I thought, wow, this, this sounds great. So I talked to my wife and I thought, you know, I'll go to New York and, and get this done. Well, um, an angel came into my life. <laughs> I get emotional. Uh, Dr. Dan Trone came to our support group meeting and he came with the license to do a double blind study. And he was recruiting, he wanted to recruit 10 people. Five would get Botox, five would get a placebo. And uh, my wife was with me at the meeting. She said, are you interested in this? And I said, yeah, but I don't want to get the placebo. Uh, I, I want the real thing. And so she got on the phone and called his office every day until finally they relented and allowed uh, two of us to get Botox before the study started, uh, a man and a woman, I was the man. And um, so we met uh, at the hospital and Dr. Trong and my uh, otolaryngologist, Dr. Rontel, who had done, who had done the uh, surgery, the license of the recurrent laryngeal nerve, and Dr. Trong's nurse assistant were all there. And uh, it's one of those things that still burned into my brain because I can still see their faces as they used a grease pencil to make marks on my neck <laughs> and throat and then did the injection. They did both sides, um, even though one of my vocal cords is paralyzed. And um, that was it. So I went home and later that day, Dr. Trong called me and said, I think we gave you too much. He said, you're going to get very breathy. He said, don't worry about it. It'll It'll come back. So I said, okay. The next morning, I knew it was working and I felt really good. But as the day progressed, the breathiness came on and uh, I had a period of about six weeks of, of breathiness. Everybody was very concerned. I was not because I knew this stuff would work and we just had to tune it up a bit and, um, and get the right dosage. So through a series of decreasing amounts, I started with 10 units in each vocal cord and Currently, for probably the last 28 years, I've been getting one third of one unit in one vocal cord, and I'm blessed that it works so well for me. In fact, I've been called an imposter at meetings. People don't believe that I have spasmodic dysphonia. Well, Dr. Trong uh, is a special person. He uh, he can't say no to him. Uh, a couple of months after my injection, uh, he called me one day and said, Larry, we're going to start a national organization and you're going to be the president. And I said, no, no, you're smoking something. I don't think so. Of course, he persisted and he's like a bulldog. And um, I went away to a meeting, uh, a national meeting that I go to every year. And the theme of the meeting was commitment. And uh, as I sat there and listened to all these speakers, uh, Dr. Trong just kept coming back and back. And so I got home and I said, okay, I'll do it. Now, Dr. Trong didn't only recruit me, he recruited other people in the local area, brought us to his home for dinner, <laughs> wined and dined us, and, and really put together uh, the first board. Um, and I had no idea what I was doing. You know, I'm a, I was a independent, life insurance and, and uh, security salesman with no experience in any kind of major uh, endeavors. So, uh, but Dr. Trunk said to me, well, you're a leader and you, you'll figure it out. So, uh, but with his help and, and also 
he gave us our first donation, um, which you know helped us with postage and and uh, some other things that uh, you know just just to get started. So he's he's truly the founder of this organization. Having been involved in the NSDA this long, I can't not think about him anytime I think about the NSDA. Thank <music> you.